Denmark, with an area slightly larger than Switzerland, is almost completely surrounded by the sea. To the south, its land border with Germany is only 67 kilometers long, but its coastline measures over 7,000 kilometers overall. Shipping is omnipresent in Denmark. There is dense traffic in Öresund, consisting of sailing boats, motor yachts, fishing boats, merchant ships and ferries. Denmark's largest island of Zealand, which also contains the capital Copenhagen, has been connected to the Danish mainland in the west by an imposing bridge over the Great Belt since 1998. And since 2000, there has been a link to Sweden via the striking bridge and tunnel that cross the Öresund. The Öresund, the shortest sea route between the North Sea and Baltic Sea, has been of special strategic importance since time immemorial. For a long time, the Great Belt had no significance. Its navigation was too tortuous. Today, about 35,000 commercial vessels use both this route and the Öresund. The draft of a ship decides whether it can take the much shorter Öresund way through the Drogden Channel. The Great Belt is really the main passage through Denmark. Uh, because the, the water is much deeper in the Great Belt. Uh, in the Sound, you have this Drogden Rane, as I mentioned uh, before, which is the most dangerous part. 95% of the ships passing through that. And you have not more than 8 meters of water in that uh, small piece of, 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 of Rane. The Drogden Channel through the Øresund is not only shallow, but narrow too. This is especially true for the region before Copenhagen, where the route takes ships over the tunnel, which is part of the new connection to Sweden. But ships calling at the port of Malmo from the south, or leaving it in a southerly direction, have to pass under the bridge. Malmo has experienced a huge economic boom since the opening of the Öresund Bridge. The greatly expanded port is operated as a joint venture together with that of Copenhagen. Apart from cargo and passenger ships, the facility is mainly used by large car ferries. As the city owns most of the undeveloped land, it can maintain control of the intensive building activity and keep the prices of new residential space at a moderate level. With the construction of this spectacular skyscraper designed by the Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava, the city authorities have created a landmark that symbolizes the breakthrough of Malmö, the third largest city in Sweden. And the mayor, Ilma Repalu, already in office for 17 years, is extremely proud of it. Malmö and Copenhagen, we want to be showcased in the world, to be the cleanest cities in the world. We are, this, all these areas, carbon dioxide neutral, for instance. 100% of all the energy here is produced locally and is renewable. And this is a showcase for the rest of the world. And that's very good for, for this region, that Malmö and Copenhagen shows up in that way. Ray Palu played a significant part in getting the billion euro Orisand bridge built. The bridge is 7.8 kilometers long with two levels, a two-track railway below and a four-lane highway above. It costs 40 euros for a passenger car to cross the bridge. The longest span over the shipping navigation channel measures 490 meters, and the bridge has a clearance height of 57 meters. The two concrete pylons that carry the structure are 206 meters high. After warring for centuries over control of the Öresund, the neighboring countries of Denmark and Sweden, whose rivalry has not disappeared on the football field, have now been joined together. And on both sides of the sound, there is still enthusiasm, even euphoria, about the structure. Building the bridge 
that changed the mindset of people. Uh, the bridge means that we were building a lot of mental bridges, bridges between different professions, bridges between the city councils, bridges between the, the, the commercial actors in this region. And of course, uh, building the bridge also meant a lot for the people, easy to commute to jobs on both sides. And maybe also it was an open your eye process, an open your eye process where we make statistics showing that we are not the third biggest town in Sweden. No, we are part of the biggest region in the Nordic countries. It is about green growth, uh, reducing CO2, uh, creating good, good public transportation, uh, creating cities of social integra and, and uh, ethnic integration. Um, so there's a lot of areas. Our goals resemble those of Malmö's goals. So suddenly we found out that we can even match our, uh, our city plans and trying to make the same vision for the whole region instead of two separate visions of each, each city. Many Danes are going uh, to live, are, are living in Sweden because some of the expenses are, are lower there and there are uh, exchange of, of everything there via the bridge. So that has proved to be very efficient. And this Ørsted project is, is very well working. And in the global cooperation, uh, it is uh, more and more city regions who uh, compete um, in, in the global economy. And uh, of course, it's, we have a, uh, we, if we join forces with Malmö, we have a greater chance of, uh, of uh, competing with other city regions in, in Northern Europe. As a tourist attraction, however, Copenhagen remains Scandinavia's most exciting destination. The mermaid by the local sculptor Edvard Eriksson and Tivoli, one of the oldest amusement parks in the world, are must-see landmarks, not only for tourists, but also for locals. Equally famous is the Royal Copenhagen Porcelain Factory, which was founded in 1775. But the tourist epicenter is Niehafen, the new port, with its many spruced up old gabled houses and numerous moored ships. This is also the departure point of the sightseeing boats that traverse Copenhagen's many waterways and canals. Copenhagen has a great deal to offer gastronomically. With a total of 40 Michelin stars, it's ahead of, say, Vienna, Rome and Berlin. In addition to avant-garde eateries, there are several speciality restaurants with cuisine from all over the world. The Elsass, for example. Who would suspect such a thing in Copenhagen? Although Copenhagen and Malmö have grown closer thanks to the Øresund Bridge, the ferry connection at the narrowest part of the sound between Elsinore and Helsingborg has become more important than ever before. It's cheaper than using the motorway bridge and runs at 20 minute intervals, so hardly any waiting time is involved. There is just enough time to stock up with perfumes and cigarettes in the duty-free shop or to knock back a cheap glass of wine, exempt from the high taxes on alcohol found on the Scandinavian mainland. But the days when the ferries between Sweden and Denmark were used for extended drinking bouts are over, at least on the elsinore helsingborg ferries. The journey takes only 20 minutes and the fines for drinking and driving are astronomical, several thousand euros. <laughs> <laughs> 